जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय Of Krishna. Please repeat. Whether one is a Brahmana, 
Sannyasi or a sutra, regardless of what he is, he can become a spiritual master if he knows the science of Krishna. Purport. This verse is very important to the Krishna consciousness movement. In his Amrita Pravaha Basya, Srila Bhakti Thakur explains that one should not think that because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born a Brahmana and was situated in the topmost spiritual order as a sannyasi, it was improper for him to receive instructions from Srila Ramananda Roy, who belonged to the Sudra caste. To clarify this matter, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu informed Ramana, Ramananda Roy that knowledge of Krishna consciousness is more important than caste. In the system of Anashram Dharma, there are various duties for the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Sudras. Actually, the Brahmanas is supposed to be the spiritual master of all other Varnas or classes. But as far as Krishna consciousness is concerned, everyone is capable of becoming a spiritual master because knowledge of Krishna consciousness is on the platform of the spirit soul. To spread Krishna conscious, one need only to be cognizant of the science of the spirit soul. It does not matter whether one is a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Sannyasi, Grihastra, or whatever. If one simply understands this science, one can become a spiritual master. It is stated in the Hari Bhakti Vilas that one should not accept initiation from a person who is not in the Brahminical order. If there is a fit person in the Brahminical order present, this instruction is meant for those who are overly dependent on the mundane social order and, situ and suitable for those who want to remain in mundane life. If one understands the truth of Krishna consciousness and seriously desires to attain transcendental knowledge for the perfection of life, one can accept a spiritual master from any social status, provided the spiritual master is fully con conversant with the science of Krishna. Very important point. That's the qualification. That means anyone who, is, who knows the science of Krishna is qualified to be a guru. Mm -hmm. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati also says, that although one is situated as a Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmachari, Vyana, Vana Prasa, Grihasa, or Sanasi, if he is conversant in the science of Krishna consciousness, he can become a spiritual master as Vartma Padarkshaka Guru, Diksha Guru, or Shiksha Guru. The spiritual master who first gives information about spiritual life is called the Vartmana Padarkshaka Guru the spiritual master who initiates according to the regulations of the Shastras is called Diksha Guru, and the spiritual master who gives instructions for elevation is called the Shiksha Guru. Factually, the qualification of a spiritual master depends on his knowledge of the science of Krishna. It does not matter whether he is a Brahmin, Kshatriya, Sannyasi, or Sutra. This injunction given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not at all against the injunctions of the Shastras. In the Padma Purana, it says, Nas Sudra Bhagavan Bhaktas, Tepi Bhagavata Totamaha, Sarve Veneshu Te Sudra, Yena Bhakti Janardanahe. One who is actually advanced in spiritual knowledge of Krishna is never a Sudra even though one may have been born in a family of sutras. However, even if one is a vipra or brahmin, is very expert in the six brahminical activities, patan, patan, yajan, yajan, dana, pratigra, and is also well versed in the Vedic hymns, he cannot become a spiritual master unless he is a Vaishnava. But if one is born in the family of a chandalas, yet, is well versed in Krishna consciousness, he can become a guru. These are the instructions, I'm sorry, these are the Shastra injunctions, and strictly following these injunctions, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as a Grihastra named Sri Vishwambar, was initiated by a sannyasi guru named Ishwar Puri. Similarly, Sri Nityananda Prabhu was initiated by Madhavendra Puri, a sannyasi. 
According to others, however, he was initiated by Lakshmi Bhatti Tirtha. Advaita Acharya, although a Grihastha, was initiated by Madhavendra Puri. And Sri Rasikananda, although born in a Brahmana family, was initiated by Sri Shamananda Prabhu, who was not born in the caste Brahman family. There are many instances in which born Brahmanas took initiation from a person who was not born in the Brahmana family. The Brahmana, Brahminical symptoms are explained in Srimad Bhagavatam 7. 11 and 5 were in a state of yashaya laksanam proktam pum samparnam bigyachakam yad atra anyatra pidrishyeta tatenaiva vinir dishet. If a person is born in a sutra family but has all the qualities of a spiritual master, he should be accepted not only as, not only as a Brahmin but as a qualified spiritual master also. This is also the instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur therefore introduced the sacred thread ceremony for all Vaishnavas according to rules and regulations. Sometimes a Vaishnava who is born as a Bhajananandi does not take the Sattvika Samskara, that is the sacred thread initiation, but this does not mean that this system should not be used for preaching work. There are two kinds of Vaishnavas, Bhajananandi and Ghostianandi. Bhajananandi is not interested in preaching work, but Ghostianandi is interested in spreading Krishna consciousness to benefit the people and increase the number of Vaishnavas. A Vaishnava is understood to be above the position of a Brahman. As a preacher, he should be recognized as a Brahmana. Otherwise, there may be a misunderstanding of his position as a Vaishnava. However, a Vaishnava Brahmana is not selected on the basis of his birth, but according to his qualities. Unfortunately, those who are unintelligent do not know the difference between a Brahmana and a Vaishnava. They are under the impression that unless one is a Brahmana, he cannot be a spiritual master. For this reason only, Sri Chaitanya makes this statement in his verse, Kiva Vitra Kipanasa Sudha Ke Ninai, Ye Krishna Tattva Vete Se Guru Hoi. If one becomes a guru, he is automatically a Brahmana. Sometimes a caste guru says that Ye Krishna Tattva Vete Se Guru Hoi means that one who is not a Brahmana may become a Shikshu Guru or a Vart. Varta Padarkshana Guru, but not initiator Guru. According to such caste gurus, birth and family ties are considered form foremost. However, the hereditary consideration is not acceptable to Vaishnavas. The word Guru is equally applicable to the Vartana Var Padarkshana Guru, Shikshu Guru, and Diksha Guru. Unless we accept the principle enunciated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this Krishna consciousness cannot spread all over the world. According to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's intention, Prithivitti Achayate Nagarari Gram Sarvatra Pachai Hoibi Morinam. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult must be preached all over the world. This does not mean that people should take to his teachings and remain sudras or chandalas. As soon as one is trained as a pure Vaishnava, he must be accepted as a bona fide Brahmana. This is the essence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instructions in this verse. End of purport. Om Agyanti Medandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Uyveli Tangina Tasmai Sri Guru Vedama Sri Chaitanya Mahobhistam Stati Tanya Bhutale Swaya Rupa Kadama Yam Dadanti Swadanti Kam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki The first line in the purport said, this verse is a very important to the Krishna consciousness movement. And as we heard, certain, when we say misconceptions were 
brought to light and then cleared by Srila Prabhupada. The texts of pure devotee to understand pure knowledge. Others who are not pure can read and also conjecture and also philosophize. But unless they have the pure knowledge, pure devotion, they can understand pure instructions completely. That's why Prabhupada, in commenting on this verse, he says, Lord Chaitanya, this is Lord Chaitanya's movement. And what is he saying? <clears throat> that to become a devotee really means to develop the proper qualities. And those qualities allow one to engage in devotional service. When those qualities become manifested, and one develops what we say, a fundamental working principle of the philosophy in application. In other words, one can apply those principles in day-to-day -day life and can explain those principles in a way that is convincing to others and in relationship to all other principles that are contrary to that principle. In other words, when one can establish the truth in contrast to all other principles of so seeming truth, untruth, then one is qualified, as they say, to sit on the Vyasa side, or to become a spiritual master. But Lord Caitanya has made it sound very simple, and it is, in that sense, that one should know the science of Krishna. Mm -hmm. So the science of Krishna is quite deep. <laughs> So how much do you have to know before you actually become qualified to become a spiritual master? Well, that, that, is, that can be discussed in terms of one's realization of what this knowledge is. Because knowledge comes by theory and practical application. Practical application is the only way realization can be. Unless we apply what we will be here, the knowledge remains what we say theory. So, in that sense, then one has to understand deeper what is this knowledge in practice. And, of course, this knowledge is transcendental, so it is, it is perfect. It's not subject to what we say, uh, the uh, effects of the material energy. It's free from the three modes of material energy. That's what transcendental means. And it's coming down from the perfect authority, Lord Sri Krishna himself. So when that knowledge is applied in practice, one gets the result. No matter who you are, no matter what the situation is, because the knowledge is transcendental to both. In the mundane material atmosphere and one's, what we say, situation, who you are, as it says here, the, there's no, Lord Chaitanya says, regardless of what that person is. So anyone be, can, can become a spiritual master if they know the science of Krishna. Someone asked Prabhupada, can women become spiritual masters? And Prabhupada said, we have our Janava Devi, who was at that time when she was preaching, she was the wife of Lord Chaitanya, uh, Lord Nityananda, and Lord Chaitanya had already left the planet, and she organized all the Vaishnavas from the different parts of the of India, from those who were in Jagadav Puri, those who were in Vrindavan, and those who were in Navadvip, those three places. And she was considered to be the leader of all the Vaishnavas, and therefore she was considered to be a guru in that sense. So, what is the qualification? It's explained here. First qualification is that one has to be engaged in devotional service. That's all. One has to be engaged in devotional service according to the instructions of the spiritual master. A student becomes a student by learning from the teacher. And that student also is expected to become a teacher. That's what this Krishna Consciousness Movement is really about. It's about creating teachers, not remaining students. 
mm, a, a teacher is also a student because a teacher is always learning more. But at one point it becomes a teacher when 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 one start understands the science of Krishna consciousness. But we might take it even in a more simplified sense. When Lord Chaitanya said something else and made it even simpler, he said, "Whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna." And he said, that is the quality of a spiritual teacher or guru, one who simply ex tells everyone whoever they meet. He says, tell them about chanting the holy name. And he said, he said to the Korma Brahman, he said, if you follow these instructions, the Korma Brahmana, the Korma Brahmana, Lord Chaitanya visited the house of this one Brahman who was living in Korma Shetra. He stayed about two or three days. Korma Brahmana served the Lord with such devotion, such intention, and such you know, love. And when Lord Chaitanya left, he just wanted to follow Lord Chaitanya. And he was following him, walking. Lord Chaitanya said, go back, you have your family. He said, no, I just want to come with you. He said, no, you go back and you preach the science to whoever you meet. And then he spoke, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. Whether you're a Brahmana, or a Kshatriya, or a Grihasta, or whatever, if you are practicing Krishna consciousness, the science, then one can become a spiritual teacher. And Prabhupada even gives it clear that one can even become a Dikshu Guru. There are those who say that this verse only applies to Shiksha and, what is it, Vartma Padakshana Guru. A Vartma production of Guru is one who introduces one to the process. It could be the book, book distributor on the street, the first time you meet a devotee against your book, that is called your Vartmana production of Guru. Or it could be anyone, the person who takes you to the temple for the first time and introduces you. So that person may not even be a practicing person, but still are considered a guru in the sense that they brought on someone else to the process of pure bhakti. Yeah. I remember when I first got a piece of literature in 1970, I was at an anti-war rally in, against the war in Vietnam in America. And I was there with a, a large group, and we saw the devotees for the first time. That was 1970, so the movement was quite young in those days. So, of course, I didn't know anything. And then some little, she was really small Mataji, <laughs> tiny. I had to look down, I'm small, you know. <laughs> so she had the, she was giving out incense and, uh, what is it? Back to Godhead magazines. And she said, you know, she was very nice and preaching and said, well, this is, you know, or I don't remember exactly what she said. And then she said, and I said, well, okay, I'll give you 50 cents. And that was a lot in those days. <laughs> it was like 40 years ago. <laughs> and for the magazine and some incense, she said, no, $2. So I gave $2. And then I kept those, I read it, didn't understand anything. There's a little magazine called, Who is Krishna and no, Who? <coughs> Krishna, this, the reservoir of all pleasure, and who is crazy? Prabhupada wrote that in response to people who were saying, well, you people are obviously crazy. Nobody walks around with bed sheets, you know, out in the streets, or, and bald heads. Is, these little funny things hanging from the back of your head, you know. And so it's like something from another, you know, dimension, a realm of existence. But Prabhupada just went into, this was quite common, so Prabhupada wrote this response. Well, you say we are crazy, and we say you are crazy. And so you say we are crazy because we are like this, we say you are crazy because you don't know who you are. So, the standard of sanity means to understand who you are. And if you don't know who you are, that's a symptom of insanity. And then he wrote this whole little pamphlet, you know, which was quite lengthy, about 30 pages, on 
difference between the body and the soul. Like that. So I read that, and Krishna in the Reservoir of All Pleasure, put it in my drawer, never saw it again for two years. But then again, it was there with me for two years. So is that person, although I don't remember her name, I don't even remember what she looks like, anything. It was just so vague now. But that was the person who brought me to Krishna consciousness. So I think we all had an experience of someone who has brought us to that path. And of course, it may also be your spiritual master, may be the first one. It could be that. But that person is also called a guru. It's given a very lofty title, guru. And then there's those who are shiksha guru. Shiksha means those who give instructions. Diksha and shiksha are it's explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the first chapter in Adi Lila, that shiksha and diksha are actually two sides of the mercy of the Supreme Personality of God, and they are the same. There's no difference between shiksha guru and diksha guru, in the sense that um, both are there in order to guide the living being back to Godhead. And so one can get shiksha from diksha. Diksha actually gives shiksha. But one may also take on shiksha from another individual. And that person is called one shiksha guru. So there are those who, who, who translate, or what we say, interpret this verse by saying that this verse doesn't apply to diksha guru. But Prabhupada makes it clear that it does, and that even one can give initiation if they know the science of Krishna. And so that is the qualification, knowing the science of Krishna. And Krishna conscious science is explained in many of the books we have, but in the essence of that science is in the practice itself, the philosophy is also part of the science, but the essence is to know the practice. Because without practicing properly, the philosophy will not really develop nicely. So where is that science? Mostly it's in nectar of devotion. And of course, nectar of instruction, Sari Bhakti Vilas, mostly free Grihastas, and where else? Uh, Jaiva Dharma, the science of bhakti. So it's an interesting science, it's a deep science. What does it mean by science? Science means it brings out the realization of Krishna through a certain series of activities and practices that awakens one's natural love of Krishna. And it's a very systematic process. And what is that science? That science is to reveal Krishna. The scientific, so the saying science means actually proof. So the realization that one knows the science of Krishna is one is becoming Krishna conscious. And what does it mean to become Krishna conscious? It means to be conscious of Krishna as much as possible. Fully Krishna conscious means all the time, but. There is a level of Krishna consciousness that one is always somehow or other connected with Krishna in devotional activities, either through hearing, chanting, serving, uh, praying, remembering. Another of the nine, one of the nine processes of devotional service is somehow becoming activated at one point. So then that, that, that is one is Krishna conscious. One is using their time, energy, intelligence facilities to engage in devotional service. Well, then question may ask, well, if someone is living outside and they are a grihast and they have a family, can they become a guru? Yes, it says, actually here, even grihastas. Lord Chaitanya demonstrated this. Why Lord Chaitanya actually spoke this verse in relationship to what he was trying to um, show by taking the, what we say, shelter of Ramananda Roy and hearing about the science of Krishna. Ramananda Roy spoke very systematically the whole science of Krishna from the very basic principle to all the way up to the highest aspect of 
Radharani's love for Krishna and Vrindavan. And it was very it's nicely explained in this chapter. And Srila Prabhupada, in 1940s, somewhere in the 40s, wrote a book on this chapter. I don't know if you ever saw that book. But Prabhupada wrote a book. Our Srila Prabhupada wrote a book. It's a book. It's not just a pamphlet. You know, it's, it's like over a hundred and some pages long. Prabhupada writes a whole book on this just to, sh to give us the understanding how important it is that this particular chapter when Lord Chaitanya is hearing the science of the highest philosophy from someone who apparently is in a lesser varna or lesser ashram, someone who is a great hostel. So sometimes devotees say, well, we should only hear from the sannyasis or the gurus. No. You can learn from anybody as long as that person is, you know, connected to the process of devotional service. In fact, that is the qualification of one who is a real student. They learn from everybody. It's like in the 11th canto, there is the... <coughs> Song of the Avanti Brahmana, and he has 25 gurus. And gurus are the wind, the pigeon, Pingala, the prostitute, uh, time. And in nature, he's finding the dog. He's learning so many things from all aspects of nature and other lower living entities. He calls them there my 25 spiritual teachers. So, one who is a real student is always learning. But, in order to become connected to the process of devotional service, one has to take shelter of a qualified uh, person who is qualified to give the initiation. And there, this qualification is mentioned that one should know the science of Krishna. Now, to take it on to another level, this Prabhupada is really saying, and he mentions it here, that uh, everyone, all devotees, should become gurus. He said that to all of us. He said, you all become spiritual masters. He told us that directly. He didn't mean just in a theoretical sense, but he meant in, a, in actually taking on the responsibility of accepting disciples. He wanted that for everybody. <laughs> Not that we just remain on a, well, the neophyte level, and then uh, on the neophyte level, there's no, there's no real, real satisfaction in Krishna consciousness. One has to come to the second class platform, and even on the second class platform, one can be a spiritual teacher, a spiritual master, and that is the basis of our Krishna consciousness movement. That everyone is supposed to come to the second class platform. And what is the second class platform? Four qualifications or four characteristics. What are they? To love to give your love for Krishna, to Krishna, to make friends with other Vaishnavas and share Krishna consciousness together. To preach to others or to show compassion to those who are not. Krishna conscious, and to avoid the, what we say, the atheists, those who are demoniac, those who are against devotional life. So the third principle is that show compassion. I was just listening to Prabhupada the other day, and he was explaining, actually, this is what it means to practice Krishna consciousness, that everyone should be a preacher. Everyone should be a preacher. We might say, well, I don't, you know, I'm too shy. <laughs> I can't preach. Can I tell you something about myself? It's kind of boring, but... Uh, I'm not a teacher, and I'm not a good preacher. But when I was a kid going to school, if you would ask me to stand up in front and give a, a talk in front of a class, I would shake so much, turn different colors, and become completely silent. It was the greatest fear in my life to speak in front of an audience. Really, so fearful. I was thinking, better to die. 
<laughs> there are people who are like that. To give up to be a public, you know, things. It's just so fearful. And even when I joined the Hare Krishna movement, I was like that. <laughs> really. For years. And then I thought, well, you know, I got to do it. I got to learn that. I got to get over this. It's so humiliating. You know, I have to practice Krishna and I can't speak. So I just force myself and practice. And someday I'll learn. <laughs> but that this shows the power of Krishna consciousness that anyone, you know, even if you feel like you're unqualified, the qualification to do whatever you feel is necessary to fulfill the instructions of the spiritual master is coming from outside of you. The only qualification is your, de your desire. Because Krishna can empower. Look what he did to Jagai and Vanai. I mean, they were the most sinful, the most decrepit, the most low, the most, the most of everything that is wrong. <laughs> and he made them, you know, Vaishnavas. And Lord Chaitanya told all his devotees, you should not see them. You should only see them as pure Vaishnavas in no other way. Don't look at them at all. He told that to all his followers. They are purified. That's the power of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. So one can become qualified or purified simply by accepting the mercy. Because in, when we speak about Lord Chaitanya, we speak about the mercy that's unlimited. He is unlimitedly merciful. So to become a spiritual master or to to take on the position of being an instrument to spread Krishna consciousness is, is the empowerment that Srila Prabhupada wants to give every devotee in this movement. Every devotee in this movement. And that way the movement will spread fast. <laughs> because there are, the world is, you know, is in need. And there's too few devotees and there's too many, there's too much Maya. And so, this verse really also says um, that one should actually come forward. Sri Chaitanya's cult must be preached all over the world, it says here. It says here, unless we accept the principle enunciated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this Krishna conscious movement cannot spread all over the world. This doesn't mean that people should take his teachings and remain in their lower positions. As soon as one is trained in a Vaishnava, one can be accepted as a Brahmana. This is the essence of his instructions, he said. So this, verse, this verse is very fundamental to the principles of Guru of Tattva, that what it means to be a Guru. Look at it. Prabhupada gives so many examples here, but another example is Naratam Das Thakur. He was born in a, a Kayasta family. He was considered to be a Sudra, but yet he gave initiation to, what was his name? Chakravarti. One of the greatest of all, huh? Vishwana? Not Vishwana Chakravarti. Narayan Chakravarti. One of the greatest Vaishnavas at his time, and he was a Brahmana. I'm not, he wasn't a, I'm sorry, not a Vaishnava. He was a great Brahman and was respected by all the Brahmanas. All the other Brahmanas became mortified and complained to the king. This Naratam, he's born in a Sudra family, he's in low class, he's giving, he's giving, he's giving Diksha initiation to, to Narayan Chakravarti, who's born in a Brahmana family. This is abominable. We should destroy this Naratam. He's, he's going against all the Shastric injunctions. So they made a plan to destroy Naratam. The king said, all right. The king whose name was Nishriyarat. He said, all right. And then he called one Kaviraj, Rupa Rupa Kaviraj. He was the one that was defeated by uh, Chiba Goswami. <laughs> what was his name? Rupa Kaviraj, I think. Yeah. So they came. And they were going to challenge Naratam to a debate and, de and defeat him. So they were coming. And then Naratam, Naratam Das's 
Thakur's devotees realized that they were coming to challenge Narata. So Narayan Chakravarti and, who is it, Ramachandra Kaviraj disguised himself as a betel nut salesman and a pot salesman and set up the little stands on the side of the road when the entourage was coming. So they stopped to buy some betel nut and pots. And then when they asked the price, these two devotees spoke in Sanskrit. And I said, you're speaking pure Sanskrit and you're just selling pots and betel nut and you're just like, well, who are you? We're disciples of Narita. <laughs> oh, oh, Narita. And then they start criticizing him. They said, well, you're going, to dis you're going to talk to our spiritual master and challenge him. Why don't you discuss it with us first? And so they did. And then they, oh, he defeated all the Brahmins. They defeated all the Brahmins. And then when Rupa Kaviraj came to defeat them, he was also defeated. So the king said, well, if you can't dis defeat the disciples of Naratam, what's what to speak about Naratam? So let's turn back. <laughs> so they came up. So this was Naratam Dastakur. He, he, uh, he of course he was a great great acharya, but his caste and his birth was a, a, was a, was of a low low caste. So similarly, even though you know we see. Even in our Krishna consciousness movement, what is our sukriti? What is our samskara? Zero. There's no sukriti, there's no samskaras. But you see the Prabhupada, Lord Chaitanya's movement, is empowering devotees to spread Krishna consciousness. And it obviously it's spreading. So that shows that it's by the mercy of the spiritual master, when we take up the instructions of the spiritual master, great empowerment comes. And that's, that is Krishna consciousness. It's an empowered process. It's not a process of ability. It's not a process of proclivities. It's not a process of past experiences. It's not a process of individual qualities. It's a process of becoming empowered. So that's what Lord Chaitanya wants. He wants to empower everyone with his mercy and to spread Krishna consciousness. That's why he said, by my command, be Guru, save the land. So this is a very, as Prabhupada said, very important verse for the Krishna consciousness movement. That anyone who knows the science of Krishna can become a spiritual master. There's no disqualification on, on any other level. The only disqualification is that one is not interested. In other words, without, unless you have the desire, you cannot become qualified. Okay, so simple, some simple points. Any questions or comments? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Um, <coughs> how do we actually move from this Kanista platform to the How do you move from a Kanista platform to the Madhyam platform? Well, what is the quality of a Kanista? characteristics of a canista. That's mentioned in the third canto. A canista sees that Krishna's nice, the spiritual master's nice, but doesn't really get along and like the other devotees. And thinks people in general are just rotten karmis. That's a canista. <clears throat> One who comes and starts to think, well, I'm so advanced. I love Krishna, Krishna is so nice, I am really, my spiritual master is everything, but the other devotees are just in Maya, or they're just a nuisance. Or, you know, one doesn't see the value of association, nor does, know how one has, now does not know how to associate with other devotees. These are symptoms of Kanista. And, one should learn the science of Krishna consciousness as taught by Srila Prabhupada in Nectar and Devotion. So there are 16 Anarthas, and two of the Anarthas are one who does not know the science of um, Sadhana Bhakti. So we should read Prabhupada's books and know how Sadhana Bhakti works. 
sadhana bhakti is the basis of practice. It contains two aspects. Following rules and regulations, that's called Vaidhi Bhakti, and then Raganuga Bhakti, when devotion becomes spontaneous, then it reaches what we say spontaneous devotional service. So, um, by avoiding the qualities or characteristics of the Kanista, and by practicing characteristics of Madhyama, what is the characters of money men? Offer your devotion to Krishna, make friends with other devotion, devotees, and serve the devotees. Um, whatever opportunities you have according to your situation, speak about Krishna or devotional service to others. One doesn't have to change their way of living, one simply has to just see, take the opportunities, whatever Krishna provides, and speak about Krishna. To others, and one should very carefully avoid the atheistic non-devotees who are inimical. Don't try to preach to them. Sometimes you see uh, a neophyte devotee will try to shove Krishna consciousness down the throat of somebody. <laughs> Just like you know, there used to be that little cartoon where. <laughs> There's a man and a devotee, a book distributor. The book distributor is talking to the devotee, and then all of a sudden, in the next scene, there's a big scuffle, and they're just rolling around, tumbling on the ground. And the guy, in the next scene, the man is sitting with a book in his mouth, and the devotee's walking away, counting the money. <laughs> so we want to avoid that kind of preaching. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm. this, by following the higher principles, one gives up the lower principles. It's not that we should avoid the lower principles, but following the higher ones manifests those qualities, and then one actually becomes situated on the platform when they become, what we say, routine. And one should, one should know, at least have a basic knowledge of Krishna conscious philosophy. If someone asks you a question, you should be able to, to at least be able to explain. And if you can, you should be able to help them in some way if we get the understanding. If we hear the classes every day, we can preach. Yes? Thank you, Prabhupada. Uh, can we just make a blanket statement saying the whole class system is no longer dependent upon the birth? Yeah, the caste system is not dependent on birth. Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati proved that. Yeah. It's dependent on qualifications, not birth. Birth is an advantage, but it's not, it's not the, what we say, qualification. If you're born in a family of brahmanas, you have a good start. But unless you develop the quality of a brahmana, then that good start has been pretty much wasted. So there is an advantage of being born in a good family. It's like if you're born in a rich family, that means you don't really have to work. You can just become Krishna conscious. <laughs> but in the same way, if you're born in a Brahmana family, that means your parents are practicing Brahminical activities, and so you can learn from that. And you can, you're exposed to that environment. And that's also your Sakriti, so I mean, there's some karma there also. But if you don't take advantage of it by practicing it, then you lose it. But those who were born in a lower family, such as Chantalas, Kiratu Hunam Palinda Pukasa, Ambir Sambadi Kasya Agat, is that? Anyway, what is it? What was the first word again? I said. Hmm. 
Kirata hunam palinda pukasa, ambirusama yana kashaya, yene chapapa upasra yasraya, pravanti pravishnave namaha. That Kirata Hunan Palinda Pukasaram Birasamba Yamana Kashadaya. These are all races, not within the Van Ashram system. Not even in the fifth class, or just like tenth class. Those who were born in these families. These persons can become gurus if they take to the science of Krishna consciousness. If they take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and learn the science. So that's, that's the extent that this philosophy goes. It's not based on anything material. Materially, materially there could be advantages, but unless one takes advantage of the advantage, it's useless. If you're rich and all your money's in, your ba in the bank and all you do every day is just look at your bank book, you are poor. You never spend your money. <laughs> I'm, I'm a millionaire, but I never spend anything. <laughs> that means your money is useless. You, know, you have to use it to actually have, to get the value of having wealth. So in the same way, one who is born in a Brahmin family, if they take advantage of that birth and learn the science, then they can be qualified Brahmins. But yes, your statement is correct. That we can say the caste system really has no meaning unless there is qualification. Qualification. And Bhakti Siddhanta proved that. There's one book called Vaishnavas and Brahmanas. You read that book by Bhakti Siddhanta. He clearly makes that principle known. And then that's there by the previous Acharyas. This hereditary thing is, is a, a form of, you know, wanting to be something, what we say, uh, recognizable or important without going through the process of becoming qualified. It's like trying to jump up without being qualified. <coughs> Another question? Yes? Thank you, Maharaj, for your um, I'm curious your opinion of um, the current state of Islam, but maybe more so the future, in regards to the, uh, this this concept that anyone can take the position of guru, and and we well my understanding of the the, the story you gave Naratam Das Thakur is that uh, his disciples were were also fighting. So I'm curious if if. Currently, I mean, we're having it's a controversial kind of situation. Maybe for some, I heard some grihastas, a new one that I know about, is possibly taking uh, disciples and, and then women. There's a lot of things going on, mm. and for the future, well, I think that's our that's the future of our movement. And, uh, they will go in that direction. And more and more ladies and others will become spiritual masters. It's just. Some, the problem with our movement in the early days is we haven't given an opportunity for everyone to grow. That's the problem. And now I think we're getting over that. Everyone's getting more of a chance to grow. And when you get a chance to grow, then you grow. And those who can grow will grow naturally if when the opportunity is there. But that's why it's a little lopsided now, because the opportunities weren't given. But I see in the future that, that it seems like it's going in that direction. And there are more and more people who are becoming more and more qualified. Believe me, one of the greatest things for those of us who are in a position of spiritual masters, we want more spiritual masters. Because it is very difficult because there's so many, many responsibilities. It's a heavy burden to, to, you know, to do what comes your way. Because people want shelter, people want guidance, people want you to come and preach. And if we don't have enough people to preach, then it becomes a problem. They don't get what they want, and others you know, are stretched. So yeah, hopefully more and more persons will come up to that standard. Ladies, everyone, and whoever can come up to that standard. 
So previously, the opportunity to grow was not given. At least it was lopsided. So I see changes coming, good changes. Anyway, that's what I see. Yes? Do you ever see the Krishna conscious movement um, becoming less in your world with the other religions? Becoming less? Um, less followers. Or less people understand well, and if you, following Well, I think if you measure us in relationship to other major religions, we do have much, much more numbers. Than that. But numbers are not important in the sense that we want everyone to become Krishna conscious, but we also want everyone to come up to the quality. Just to have a bunch of followers who don't know anything. It doesn't really make a... Sometimes we count success by numbers. Numbers are not always an indication of what is successful in our growth and movement. It's actually quality. Quality means that one should be developing the qualities of a Vaishnava and coming up to the standard. One should be giving up any desire to enjoy the material world. That's what a Vaishnava is. One who's finished with this material world is not trying to find happiness in material life. When we have devotees who are through with the material energy, although they still may be attached to it, but they at the same time they don't want it anymore. Then we have quality in our movement. As long as we still want Maya, you know, we can't really say that we're actually making devotees, you know, we're actually creating the growth that is required in order to build a solid, you know, worldwide movement. So numbers, you know, Prabhupada made that quote. Give me one moon, I don't care about all the twinkling stars. Because what he says, well, one pure devotee can change the whole world. But this Krishna consciousness is allowing for everyone to come in. Anyone, jug eyes, mud eyes, and lower. Everyone can come in and practice. But don't stay low. <laughs> don't stay down. You know. Go, guru, go, you go, man, I'm over here, I'm watching. <laughs> it's like a cheerleader section, you know. <laughs> That's not our movement. The movement is, our, I have to be like him also. I have to, you know, I have to come up to the standard. That's what it means. It means moving forward. So, the, and, the, and the way the process works is if you're not moving forward, you're moving back. I mean, there's no question of staying still in this movement because the material energy pushes you backwards. And unless there's a struggle or an effort to go against that flow, we'll go backwards. So we have to, we have to strive to continue to purify our consciousness and free ourselves from these materialistic desires and tendencies. And it's... The power of Lord Chaitanya is complete. One, in, there's no disqualification. The only disqualification is lack of desire. Mm -hmm. Yes, another question? Um, um, to, know the, to, sorry, to know the science of, of Krishna fully, is it necessary for, is it enough for us to only read Shabbat's books or is it necessary? Yeah. yeah. Prabhupada said four books. He said, everything's in four books. At that time, it was Krishna book, uh, Bhagavad Gita, Sri Yashipanishads, and Nectar Devotion. No, 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 it wasn't Sri Yashipanishads, I'm sorry. It was Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. The so Teachings of Lord Chaitanya has now become Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna book, and Srimad Bhagavatam. Nectar Devotion and Bhagavad Gita. So these four books. Even if you don't know all of it, if you know a certain level where you can practice in such a way that you are free from the desire to, you know, to enjoy this material world, you're qualified to preach. 
If you're telling someone to give up material life, but you're still attached to it, your preaching doesn't have much potency. Although you still should preach. <laughs> but still, the potency is not... When you actually are practicing what you preach, then what you say has great effect. So, Prabhupada said these four books, that's all. That the devotion, science of bhakti. Uh, Bhagavad Gita, the preliminary understanding of the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and how this material world works. Srimad Bhagavatam is the whole science of pure devotional service. Chaitanya Charitamrita is living Bhagavatam. It's living Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya's life is Bhagavatam. So those four. So we're, we're giving now a lot of more and more emphasis on, um, on study and learning. We can do it locally. We can also do it where it's being given now in, in Vrindavan and Mayapur and other places. Believe me, when we, learn, when we get attracted to this philosophy, we, everything else becomes dry, you know, pale. You lose, the newspapers become, you know, just doormats. <laughs> There's nothing out there. The mundane world is what it is. It's just the same thing over and over again, said with different names in different places. It's the same stuff. There's nothing new in the material world. What Krishna consciousness is that even if you read, you know, one pastime, you can read it again. And each time you read it, it reveals itself more with newer and newer realizations and newer and newer, what we say, experiences of reading. It's, it's unlimited, the same thing. So yeah, those four books are enough. So Prabhupada wrote a letter in 1974, and was signed by Jamal Krishna Goswami. And now we will institute the science of education within our the principles of education. And I want to establish four levels of teaching, Bhakti Shastra, Bhakti uh, Aibhava, Bhakti Vedanta, and Bhakti Sarvabhava. So I was just in, in Mayapur, and they're, they're actually teaching Bhakti Vedanta now. Two devotees, Borijan Prabhu and Narayani, Mother Narayani. They're the only two that are teaching that level. So that what is that? That is the Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhakti Bhagavad is the first six cantos. Bhakti Vedanta is the last six cantos. And then Bhakti Sarvabhoma, once they establish that, that will be the teachings of Lord Chaitanya <coughs> Charitamrita. But if you, even if you get, a, if you know Bhakti Shastra, Bhagavad Gita, Nectar of Instructions, nectar, uh, Sri Sri Panishas, and Nectar of Devotion, you can preach. There's so much there. It's full. It's full. And preaching doesn't mean sitting in one place and giving a class. Preaching means to be, to be an instrument for another person's Krishna consciousness. To be within the family, the friends, within your workplace, somehow or other, be an instrument for for inspiring others to come forward in whatever way they can. And Lord Chaitanya made it easy. He said, "Tell me what you heard." <coughs> Four books. Any other questions? Yes. It's surprising that uh, one of these four principles you're mm -hmm. mentioning is to not preach to us, the atheists. We hear sometimes that devotees are more merciful than Krishna. How come it, that it is so uh, <laughs> that we have to be, I don't know. Well, <laughs> it means that those who are, uh, are outwardly against Krishna consciousness, if you try to give it to them, they may also become offensive. Well, they are offensive already. They might increase their offensiveness. And that may also destroy their abilities to, in the future, get them back. 
So you want to avoid it. And the Prabhupada says, don't waste time with these people because it's just, you're just wasting time and energy. But there are so many other persons who are more open. Like that. Sometimes we want to prove that we can defeat an atheist. But <laughs> in, in years ago, during Lord Chaitanya's time, people were respectable in their beliefs. That if a person was an atheist and if you defeated them, they would become a theist. Nowadays, nobody changes. <laughs> you can convince them in, from all angles and still they remain the same. Because people's ph philosophies are adopted according to their experiences. And a person usually becomes an atheist because God doesn't do what he wants. <laughs> That's why. That's why people become atheists. Mostly because their life experiences have shown them that they've had so many difficulties in life and they've been given up God because God hasn't come through and, and fulfilled their desires or really alleviated their difficulties. And if God is supposed to be good, then he's obviously not there because he's not doing his job. And so that's, you know, so there's very few philosophical atheists nowadays, very few. But these people are pretty much into name and fame anyway. Or there's some kind of scientists who have a position of atheism based on their, on their position as a scientist. So the answer to your question is don't waste time. You can go somewhere else and be more effective. But we do try to get a high level society. Uh, I mean, Prabhupada appreciates yeah. uh, that we convert scientists, for example. Yeah, it, you can try. I mean, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a film coming out soon this year. You saw that book, Nature's IQ? Mm -hmm. They're making a film. And it's going to be shown all over the, <coughs> Europe and the United States. They made the film already, it's just going to be released. It's really, as you said, it's a real shock to the whole Darwinian theory. But not from a theistic point of view, from the fallacy of Darwinism. It's showing all the things like that. When it's not about convincing people of a theistic philosophy that is based on the idea of, or, you know, of God, you know, evolution. But it's, it's really destroying them. So preach in that way that make general propaganda through books, through... But when you're speaking one-to-one, -one, you know, unless the person is submissive, it's a waste of time. And the people invite you to come, and you can also speak. And you may also ask for invitations, but if they're not... if they're not willing to be open to what you have to say, then what's the use of speaking? If they're already closed, you know. if a person is a little open, then you can speak. Otherwise, there's a lot of people who are eager to hear if you just present yourself. Yeah, we can do. We do that kind of preaching. We're doing it gradually. And it's opening up more and more. But it's very difficult preaching. You really, really have to be really sensitive to people's attachments and know how to go. It's really, it's called, what is it called? Risk preaching. <laughs> or learning how to catch the fish without getting wet. <laughs> We're doing it, you know. This film ought to be interesting. It'll be a shocker for the, the secular world <laughs> if they take it seriously. That book won, won second place in the scientific category of books in the United States for the, for the book contest. Now that's a real achievement. And in the end, the book, you see, it's, they talk about Prabhupada, the picture of Prabhupada there, 
talks a little bit about our movement. Doesn't get into philosophy, but talks a little bit about who we are and what we represent. How many of you read the book? Or at least know about the book? It's amazing. It's called Nature's IQ. It's all about the amazing, what we say, intellect of lower species. Amazing. It's amazing. I was astounded. I was just I was just reading it with such detailed interest. It just talks about you know, how animals can function with such intelligence and such synchronization. It's amazing. And it's not pop they they're trying to show and they don't they actually showed that this cannot be what we say given from species to species. It's not possible. And they showed it in a very logical, scientific, practical way. The book's great. You should read it. Nature's not good. This is the kind of preaching we want to do to the secular world. Because this Darwinism, this idea of evolution is just destroying everybody. And I teach that in schools, yes. Not that you can. These four books we read in any time or the particular time. These four books? Well, you want to, you should read Nectar Devotion. That's, that's, that's the most important book to read, Nectar Devotion. Prabhupada well, said read it once, read it twice, read it thrice, and if you don't understand it, read it again. <laughs> it's a very important book to read, the science of Bhakti, Nectar Devotion. On Bhagavad Gita is preliminary. And then Bhakti Siddhanta says you should read Chaitanya Charitamrita before you read Sri Bhagavatam. That's interesting. Usually we hear the other way. But he says that those who read Chaitanya Charitamrita before reading Bhagavatam will can understand that actually Lord Chaitanya is living Sri is living Bhagavatam. And if you read look at Prabhupada's book. What is the very beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam? It's the life of Lord Chaitanya. There's 50 pages. <laughs> it's the very beginning of the Bhagavatam. So these four books are there. So we, we come to the classes for Bhagavatam. We should have, we also have classes on Chaitanya Charita to read the Bhagavad Gita. And then for yourself, you can do independent study if you like, if you have time. But read Nectar Devotion. Now you can just pick up and read. And that's nice. That's a nice... The later parts of Nectar Devotion are a little hard to understand. But then again, you can always you know, ask questions to the devotees, get clarification. The Nectar Devotion is so important. If you haven't read Nectar Devotion, it's really hard to understand how this practice works. It's, it's really explained in nice detail. Prabhupada gave classes in Nectar Devotion, too. And there's one month in Vrindavan, right? No, Vrindavan. Is it New Vrindavan or Vrindavan? Kartik, yeah. Was Kartik was in Vrindavan or New Vrindavan? Yeah, I thought it was redundant. Yeah, for like a whole month he just gave classes on Nectar Devotion. And there's these books called Prabhupada's, what is that, Teachings? The Seven Books, Teachings of Srila Prabhupada. In there they have classes on all of Prabhupada's Nectar Devotion classes. So. <coughs> Yes. How can we best support this? Um, the, I mean, one of the statements made in the class where uh, yeah, everyone should be a guru. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> you come up to a person and say, you know, do you know what I read today? Oh, what'd you read? Oh, then that's it. And as soon as they say that, you can start talking. 
you want to you want to be a preacher? I'll tell you a secret. It's the word. It's the words of Prabhupada. It's not a secret. Prabhupada's a preacher means reader. That's all. If you read, you'll preach. Just read, 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 read until you break. You can't read anymore, and then it just has to come out somewhere. <laughs> but really, to, to, not to overstate it, if you read, you get information, and then you meet people, and you get opportunities, you speak what you read. That's all. You don't have to manufacture or change anything or try to present it in a different way. Just preach. There's that one story, eh? I told I was thinking of the other day. There was one devotee. He was asked to give a class. He was so scared to give a class. So what he did was he got a little tape recorder with Prabhupada's tape on it and he had a wire connected. <laughs> he put a thing over his head so no one could see it. And he would push the button and then he would hear Prabhupada and he'd shout it and then he would say, and this is, he was giving class like this. And everybody said, wow, he's quoting Prabhupada directly. <laughs> All he was doing was listening to Prabhupada while he was talking. And he would just like speak and then he would pause for a minute and, and then he would play something and then he would put the button on it. Of course they were wondering big gaps in between. <laughs> He <laughs> gave a great class. Somebody tell me he's a guru now. I can't. I don't know who he is. <laughs> that story is there. <laughs> so yeah, you know, just whatever Prabhupada says, or whatever your spiritual master says, just repeat it. That's all. And, and that's you know that's chastity. It's chastity. You, know, you can speak from realization. That means after you hear, you can you can explain it in your own words. That's realization. But until we develop that, we just just repeat what Prabhupada says, what our spiritual master says, what we read in the books. That's all. And you, that's all it's required. Yes, Mataji. Well, I was just at my own little basis. Hare Krishna, Krishna Prabhupada. What about music, Maharaj? A lot of devotees are attracted to music as well. Mm. Did Srila Prabhupada ever say anything about music? Like some devotees, you know, like Srila Prabhupada's disciples, they like to listen to Srila Prabhupada. But as the generation that's coming now, uh, attracted to, you know, like... Uh, yeah, so many other things. Did Srila Prabhupada ever draw a line where the music stops? How far, like... Uh, <laughs> Well, at that time, there wasn't so much. It was just Prabhupada and the kirtans and our movement. Prabhupada didn't really... He said, <clears throat> in terms of kirtan, you know, how to perform kirtan. He gave guidelines on how what kirtan should be performed, how dancing should go, how, all this stuff. But as far as... Because he said, don't listen to, you know, the kirtans outside of our movement because they're the people who are chanting are not devotees or they may be you know using kirtan for another means to propagate their own ideas or egos so that kind of kirtan is polluted the Prabhupada's only guideline was to stay within in the confines of the Param Pura like that Nothing was not. If a, if a spiritual master falls down and he used to do a really nice kirtan and he used to sing, can you still continue listening to that spiritual master? Yeah, because that'll help him come back. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm sure. Why? Why? If someone is, you know, doing bhakti nicely, and later on they have some difficulty, why? Why reject what they've done? That's that's material. Yeah, you can listen. 
Anything else? I think we're going a little over time. Okay, thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki so, we'd like to thank Maharaj for coming and spending time with us and answering all our questions.